Silicon Latimeria is the only living genus of a group that was thought to be extinct for 70 million years. This marine fish is closely related to tetrapods, the land-wheeling vertebrates, and has some unique anatomical features. Notably, it possesses an intracranial joint that divides the skull into two portions, an anterior and a posterior portion. This joint is associated with a strong muscle, the basicranial muscle, that spans ventrally to the neurocranium. The intracranial joint and the basicranial muscle are ancestral features of lobe fin fishes that were independently lost during evolution in lungfish and tetrapods. So Latimeria is the only living vertebrate that possesses an intracranial joint and a basicranial muscle. Both of these features have likely major implication on the skull mechanics during pre-capture, but their role remain unclear. So in this study, we wanted to investigate the role of the basicranial muscle and the intracranial joint in bite force generation. First, we perform a dissection of a silicon specimen housed in the collection of the Natural History Museum in Paris. During the dissection, we collected some morphological data, such as the position of the muscles, that was combined with a virtual 3D model of the skull. We then made a 3D biomechanical model of the skull that allowed us to quantify the contribution of the muscles in bite force generation and notably the contribution of the basicranial muscle. Our model suggests that the intracranial joint and the basicranial muscle flexes the anterior portion of the skull, thereby enhancing the overall bite force during the capture of a prey. So why did we, were we interested in bite force? Because bite force is an ecologically relevant performance trait. For two reasons. One, it's often used in male-male interactions. Males fight for territories. And so that's why one reason why it's important. The other reason why bite force is important, and this is more the case in the, uh, in the context of the coelacanth, is that bite force augments the size and the types of prey that an animal can eat. And so when calculating bite force in the coelacanth, we saw that for its size, especially for its head dimensions, it bites really hard. And so this allows the animal to actually eat larger and a wider spectrum of prey than it would be able to do otherwise. The results we obtained from this 3D biomechanical model allow us to better understand the feeding ecology of Latimeria. Moreover, it helps us to better interpret the functional implications of the change that occur in the skull anatomy during the evolution of silicons. When we look to the past, we can see that the evolutionary history of silicons is very complex and very long. From the early Devonian, which is about 410 million years ago to recent times, we know about 150 species of fossil silicons. And these fossil silicons had very different uh, sizes and morphologies. From small specimens with an elongated body, like an eel like body, to very giant, to very large, to giant uh, morphologies reaching 4 to 5 meters long. And uh, uh, we know that the Latimeria, uh, the extant silicon, lives in deep marine waters. But by the past, Paleozoic and Mesozoic silicons lived in different aquatic environments to fully marine, to lacustrine, estuarine uh, waters. So when we have a look, a cautious look to the past, we can see that the silicons uh, had a very important specific uh, diversity, a large morphological diversity and a high ecological diversity. So it means, at the end, that the extant silicon Latimeria is definitely not a living fossil. This study also emphasizes the importance of the natural history collection for research. Since any capture of silicon is now prohibited, we relied on specimens that have been housed in the collection for about 60 years. So the story of the silicon in the museum begins 
in uh, 1953 when the third Salakan was catching Comor. So until 1970, all the Salakant come here and so we have the larger collection of Salakant here and the story on the anatomy of the giant of the Salakant uh, was done during this year. Combined with new approaches, such as CT scanning, the collections of the Natural History Museum represent an opportunity to better understand the biology and the evolution of threatened organisms, such as the silicates.